Wisconsin is gearing up for another unprecedented election held during the COVID-19 pandemic. Local and state election officials are working tirelessly to ensure the safety and efficiency of our voting process. On top of their efforts, local clerks are also training for the possible scenario of armed groups showing up at polling places. The city of Madison and other municipalities are preparing to respond to groups who might attempt to intimidate voters. Local law enforcement is also being told there's a high possibility militia groups will have a presence on Election Day. For this past year, we have been dealing with uh, almost every city agency on things that could possibly come up just to be prepared for worst case scenarios. Gathering groups to meet at the polls on Election Day is gaining traction online. This Army for Trump website, paid by the Trump campaign, is looking for 50,000 volunteers to observe and monitor voting in battleground states. There is nothing illegal about signing up to be an observer at the polls, but you do have to follow strict guidelines. Election observers are not allowed to interact with voters, view their IDs, take photos or videos, and they can't wear or hand out materials supporting a candidate. Joining us now is Attorney General Josh Call to talk to us more in depth about voter intimidation at the polls. Attorney General, good to have you back on the program. It's good to be here. Now, a lo local election clerks and law enforcement we've talked to say they are being told to be prepare for militia groups to show up at the polls on Election Day. Are you being told that is a likely possible scenario? Well, first and foremost, I think it's important that voters in Wisconsin know that they can be confident that when they go to the polls on Election Day, that they're going to be safe and that they will be able to cast a ballot uh, freely and that we're going to have a fair election. Now, it's also true that we are working to prepare so that if there is any attempt to intimidate voters or to interfere with the voting process, that law enforcement will be prepared to respond swiftly so that any concerns that arise can be addressed immediately and that there won't be interference with the voting process. But I asked specifically about militia groups because we had the Dane County Sheriff recently tell us that they're being told on the national level that it is a likely scenario we will see these groups. So are you being told the same thing? Well, I think we don't know what's going to happen is the bottom line. And certainly there's been a lot of charged rhetoric in uh, the campaign. And, uh, you know, there are heightened tensions um, with a lot of what's been going on around the country. So preparing for that possibility is very important. But it's important for people to know as well that Wisconsin has criminal laws that protect people's right to vote safely. If somebody uh, makes a threat or uses uh, the, the threat, uh, the possibility of force to prevent somebody from voting, that's a felony in Wisconsin. It's also a felony to use duress to prevent somebody from exercising their rights to vote. And on top of that, our election inspectors are empowered to take actions to address disruptions or interference with the voting process. So there are a lot of important protections in place, and we are working with other agencies in Wisconsin to make sure that the election moves forward safely and securely. At what point do you consider someone crossing the line if they are exercising their First and Second Amendment rights for it to become voter intimidation? The line is crossed when somebody is interfering with somebody else's right to cast their ballot. There are, uh, there are competing constitutional rights here, and there are a number of uh, provisions in place that make sure that, that people can vote safely. I'll, I'll note that a lot of voting locations take place where firearms are prohibited. Uh, in schools, for example, we have gun-free school zones, and if a polling location is in a school, uh, firearms are prohibited there under the gun-free school zone laws. But if somebody is standing in front of a polling place with a long gun and they're loitering and they're not there for any purpose other than potentially trying to scare voters, uh, at that point they have crossed the line and they should know that uh, investigation and prosecution may well be following. So say they're even I know these are a lot of scenarios we're playing out, but this is on a lot of people, voters' minds. Say, say someone's across the street at a safe distance with a long gun, expressing their First and Second Amendment rights out there. So do you think that's crossing the line if they're just hanging, hanging around? Would law enforcement then need to be stepping in? It's going to depend on the, the specific facts of the circumstance. What's important is the question of, are they interfering with voters' ability to cast a ballot without fear. If, if by doing what they're doing, they're intimidating voters, at that point, our election officials are empowered to take action to remove them from the location and law enforcement could step in. You know, 
efforts to intimidate voters, no matter what take they, what shape they take, they're not only a crime, but they're an attack on our democratic system. They're an attempt to undermine the ability of the voters to have their voices heard at the polls. And that is something we take extremely seriously. And that's why we're working with other agencies to make sure that we will have safe elections and want to make clear to Wisconsinites that uh, we are preparing and that they can confidently exercise their right to vote. Now, we're already seeing uh, voter intimidation in some areas of the country as the director of the National Intelligence is claiming Iran is, po is poisoning as the far right group Proud Boys by sending threatening emails to voters. Do you know of any reports of this activity happening in our state? I'm not aware of similar activity happening in the state of Wisconsin, but what I can tell you is that uh, the Wisconsin Statewide Intelligence Center, which is staffed by employees at DOJ's Division of Criminal Investigation, works to share intelligence on a variety of issues that may be a threat to safety and security uh, in Wisconsin, including potential threats to the safety of our elections. They share that information with federal law enforcement as well as state and local law enforcement. And if they do become aware of concerns like that, uh, they take action, much as we saw in the case you're, you're referring to, there was a very swift reaction to that. Uh, Iran was identified as uh, the likely perpetrator very quickly. Uh, and if there is uh, something similar that happens in Wisconsin, there will be a similarly fast reaction. I know you mentioned about rights when it comes to people carrying guns at specific polling locations. You mentioned schools. Um, but right now, the Wisconsin Election Commission says they don't have authority to make rules about firearms at polling places. So can you provide clarity on this or can people bring guns with them when they vote? Uh, so first, you're right, there's no statewide rule in place. Uh, the legislature hasn't passed a law that prohibits having firearms at polling places. And the, as you said, the Election Commission doesn't have that authority. So it's going to depend on the specific circumstances. Some polling places will be locations where firearms are prohibited, like schools. Uh, other polling locations will be at uh, private locations or it could be uh, municipal government buildings where firearms are prohibited. Um, so in those cases, uh, individuals may not be allowed to have firearms as well. Uh, otherwise, there is no prohibition, but it is important for people to be aware that activity that crosses the line be uh, from simply uh, in observing or going about your daily business to efforts to actually interfere with people's ability to vote or that would prevent people from voting. Those are activities that do cross the line and that allow election officials and potentially law enforcement to take action. Now, we know this is just a possibility, right? No one can foresee what's going to happen on November 3rd. But are you in discussions right now um, with local law enforcement? Are they, are they even maybe potentially thinking about deploying, having some law enforcement at larger polling locations just out of precaution? I don't think we're going to see uh, law enforcement at the polling locations as a general matter. Um, I think if there's a specific issue that arises, in that case, you would see a law enforcement response to make sure that the issue was addressed. What we're doing at the Department of Justice is we are, are going to be available uh, and have a team that is ready to assist as needed on Election Day. And whether that's working with local law enforcement, uh, DA's offices, uh, or state and federal law enforcement, um, we're going to be there to, to work with folks to make sure that when concerns do arise, if they arise, that they're addressed quickly. All right. Thank you so much for talking about this topic, Attorney General, and t Thanks stay safe. Me. Yeah, take care.